scheduling production process in SAP Business by Design. My name is Olivia Johnston, and I am the Assistant Account Executive here at FMT Consultants, and I'm joined by BJ Patel, our Senior Consultant. Before we dive in, for those of you who aren't familiar with FMT, I'd like to take a few moments to give you a brief introduction of our company. Here at FMT, we have successfully completed over 1,000 projects. We have been in business since 1995 and recently celebrated our 20th year anniversary. We are Southern California's leading provider of Microsoft integrated solutions and have over 230 clients in both the United States and Canada. Our team has significantly grown over the years with currently close to 80 team members in both Northern San Diego as well as, as, well as Los Angeles. At FMT, we pride ourselves on our five core values, integrity, service excellence, collaboration, innovation, and passion. But why choose FMT? With the combination of talent, experience, and methodology, we are fully dedicated to the success of your company. We offer a wide array of services pertaining to ERP, CRM, SharePoint, BI, and Office 365. In addition to having extremely experienced consultants, we also have a dedicated help desk that offer ongoing training and support after projects are completed. Not only do we pride ourselves on our product expertise and multiple offerings, but we have won a handful of awards, including Best Places to Work, as well as multiple Small Business Awards. Here are just a few of the clients we get the privilege to work with on a daily basis. And of course, we hope one day to add your company to this list. Now I'm going to hand it over to BJ, but before I do, if at any time during the presentation you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the comment box and we will be monitoring it during the entire presentation. Thank you. BJ? Thank you, Olivia. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, as Olivia mentioned, my name is BJ and I'll be talking about the production uh, and production, scheduling of production orders in SAP by design. Uh, before I get started, I just want to make sure that you may have questions throughout the presentation. So if you can just put them in the chat box and Olivia, uh, we'll uh, jot them down and time permitting, we'll get to them as, as many as possible. If not, then we'll definitely sort of back with you and um, we'll address those questions that you may have and, and we'll get in contact with you guys. Um, okay, so production by design. There are three components that are needed to process the production order in by design. One is your bill of materials, um, your second is your bill of operations, and your third is your production model. So those are the three key elements needed in order to process a production order and by design. The other important essential, uh, essential of efficiently using by, uh, production model and by design is your scheduling of the dates. Um, you'll have your start dates, you'll have your end dates, and your request dates. So these are the important dates uh, factor into your production order that are essential. Bill materials. Um, production bill materials contain a complete and structured list of all input products um, that are available to manufacture and output products. Um, with that, production bill variants are included as well. And what they could variants contain is a subset of specific input products that are used to manufacture a specific output product. So for example, um, you can define a, a production bill of material for, for all engines for a particular type of car. So then within that, you can define variants for individual engine types. So if I take another example, so you can define a variant for a 1.6 liter engine and another variant for a 2.0 liter engine. So by using the variants in this way, you just need to enter the input product once to the system. And then what this does is that it simplifies the process of a bill of material definition by reducing the maintenance of input products for a similar output product. The bill of operations. Um, the bill of operations in by design provides you with the multifunctional and reusable concept for defining and planning manufacturing process. Uh, it enables you to define how manufacturing uh, manufacturing intermediate product part or a finished product. So basically, your self self assemblies and um, your finished product. Um, so the bill of operations details specifications on how you manufacture these products. Um, 
in this case, also you assign your all input factor you define your build materials are assigned in your bill of operation. Um, so in the bill of operation setup, you can also assign resources resources to each step of the operation. So this could include your labor resources or your equipment resources. Um, so this is the utilization of your resource management, which is also a, a component of SAP by design. Okay. You now we have our production model. So production model gather all key information you need to manufacture a product in one place. Um, it combines your bill of material, which is your product, and your bill of operation, which is your process. And it puts them together to, and it creates a blueprint for your manufacturing process. Um, there are two basic principles that underpin how the system handles production models. Uh, one is decoupling and then the other one is reuse. Um, decoupling is a, a clear split between the master data and the process information. So what this does is that it helps to ensure error-free um, master data information which is handed over to your planning and manufacturing department. The other common principle that we use on a normal basis is, is the reuse. Um, here we specify the, the key master data element just once. Um, you can then use that single master data element again and again as you specify your master data requirements. So this simplifies the process of master data definition and cuts down on your labor and overhead. Um, the other part of uh, production is, is scheduling. Um, there's two scheduling functions available in by design. Your, your basic scheduling function, which is normally what we'll use, and you'll have your operational scheduling function. The, the basic scheduling function is provided for the whole production order. So immediately after a production order has been created, it is scheduled automatically using dates from planning. Um, and then you can also manually trigger this basic scheduling by specifying the earliest start dates and, and end dates in the production order, which we'll get to when we when we get to the scheduling dates part. <clears throat> the other part of, of the function is your operational scheduling um, function. As, as opposed to we saw in basic scheduling of a whole order, in operational, you can schedule a single operation before releasing the production order. Um, you may do this, you may have to do this for such as when you have bottlenecks in your resources, um, but it can be done um, done for other resources as well. And the other part we have is the scheduling date. So you have your requested start and end date, early start and end date, and the latest start and end date and by the time. Um, so let's start off with the requested start and end date. These dates are the dates you enter for the customer requesting. So if the system, if it's a system generated production order, basically when you run the MRP, um, this request is carried over from the sales order. Um, this date can, now keep in mind that this date can be changed prior to the release of the production order. Um, the earliest start and end date. The earliest start date is the, it's the date to which the production activity is not expected to start earlier than this date, so the date that we specify. Um, the earliest end date is the date that the process of the activity can be finished, assuming that the processing start on the earliest start date. And this date is basically calculated using forward scheduling. Um, that is, if the system starts on the earliest start date, and then calculates in forward direction using activity duration and the calendar of the activity's main resource to, to, to determine the end date. Um, so basically, if you have resources defined uh, and that are scheduled out, um, as well as the calendar site, it all takes an effect and that's the system generates the early start date and the end date. Um, the, latest, the latest start and end date, uh, the latest start date is the very last latest date by which the production must be started to be able to fulfill the production order in time. Um, now, however, if you do not start the production until the latest start date, you can still fulfill the production order on time, but the end date may actually collide with your requested end date of the production order or the operation. 
Okay. Let's move on to our production process. So, and by design, this is the main process flow that SAP by design is designed on, uh, in, in, in relation to production orders. So, you begin with the creation of create of, of a product production order. This can be uh, system generated using demand planning forecast, or it can be manually triggered by creating a planning proposal. Then you go through the release of a production order. Um, the release of production order can be through a production request view, or we can bypass the production request and directly release it from the production order view. Um, the production manager in this case can assign a uh, particular task to a production worker. So it can be your um, you know, employee that you that's in the warehouse that does the production assembly parts um, or creation of the assembly. Um, a production manager would assign the task to that individual. So that's the assigning of tasks. And that individual, the production worker, can go ahead and execute the task and as well as they can confirm the task. So they have the uh, viewable screen available to them to be able to start the activities and end the activities and confirm the task when done. And then the production manager can also monitor the production uh, using the production lot view, which is basically letting the, the system lets them know where in the process the production process is. So with that, uh, we'll walk through this production process um, in the system, and that's what I'll do next, just go into the system and walk through a demo. Okay. So let me go ahead and pull that up for you. Okay. So I'm logged in into our system as any smokes. And the first step we do now, since we know since time for um, is, is limited to us, I'm just gonna go ahead and not gonna not gonna walk you through the setup of a bomb or the operations or production models because it will take too long. Um I'll just walk you through um, the setup that's already been done and just show you what what it looks like. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and access. Uh, that is my. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and access our planning and production master data work center. Within this work center, I'm going to access the production bill of materials view. And we're going to take this product, and now this has already been created. So I'm going to take this product, uh, P1105, which is a radio standard package. And I'm just going to show you what the structure looks like for that um, bill of material. So I'm in the build multi level bill of review. I'm going to click on expand all. So here I have. This is what the product, the output product I have is the radio standard, and here are the input products that it takes to build that output product. So I have three co input components. Okay, pretty simple. Um, within this, I have I can assign my ECO to those input products. Now ECOs um, can be created on the fly when you create the build material. And, or they can also be created beforehand and assign them to to uh, a uh, bill of material as you as you're working on creation of the bill of material. Um, keep in mind that once you complete a ECO and you change the bill of material, you will need a new ECO. Um, so every change that occurs, you will have to create a new ECO. So the engineering change order capability is available in my design. So that now that you're looking at the three input components, we'll be using these input components to build our output product, which is P11.0.4.5. So let's go ahead and access the production model, and I'll show you what the, the build operation is structured for. So let's go to the production models. <clears throat> I'm going to use the same output product. 
click on edit. Let's go to the channel tab. So I want to share a little detail and information of what production models already created. Um, so this is just a general, more detailed uh, information that's available. Um, the production model ID, the description, the planning area that we're going to be using. Uh, below here is the important where we talked about before how it brings in the build materials and operations together. So here's the link that connects the, the build material, material that we created and the build operation that we created and connected to the build, uh, sorry, connected to the production model. So you notice that we looked at our bomb in the before view, which is the same bomb as we looked at, and we'll look at the build operation, the structure that we created. So again, this can be created on the fly, or it can create a prior before before the uh, before you create the production model. So let's look at the bill of operations. Okay. So if I go to the bill of operation detail, it's just the uh, more information provided to you of the operational details. Um, but if I look at the structure, basically when we define the structure of how our products are going to go through the manufacturing process, this is what it looks like. So you have your element type as mark and you have your um, operational um, activities, operational element types. You will have your um, also a check operational type, which is your QA. In this case, we don't have that defined, but it is possible to assign a QA operational type within the um, build operation. But we, since for the demo, we kept it pretty simple. And we're just going to show you the two operations that this order is going to go through. Um, if I look at the first operation right here, and it gives me a little detailed information below. So this information is important because here's where we can assign our resource. Um, in this case, we've assigned the assembly machine one. So we can assign a resource to this operation. Um, and this could be your labor or equipment resource. And obviously, our oper uh, operation type is going to be made since we're going to be producing something. Underneath the operation, we can assign activities as needed. So if a production worker is going through this operation, we can define activities that they need, they can perform. So in, the, in this case, we have two activities that production worker can perform, which is the setup activity and the produce activity. In this case, activity one, we've defined it underneath is that it's just a description of set up the radio assembly and that should take this activity fixed duration 20 minutes. Okay. So this is where our, our time comes in where it's important to define it accurately of how long this process will take. The system will use this information and based on this information it'll generate a earliest start and end date. So it's important to um, accurately track how long the process will take and define that in your bill of op in the production model or your operations. Okay, so that's your first activity. Then we'll have a second activity slide, which is assembling the radio, which should take about five minutes. And within that, we also can do the confirmation method, which is assigning a package. Okay, so that's our first operation. And then we also have another operation which we can um, assign. And we can then have activity assigned to it. Again, this operation has the same assembly uh, main resource with the produce activity of it's just the package radiator, which is you're just going to package the assembled radiator. So we should take about five minutes. Now we do have the option to assign additional resources to this if needed. Um, so which which is also possible if you have more than one individual that helps package the material. So you can assign it here. Um, in the steps section right here in this tab, um, you can define steps in the, within the activity that you want the production worker to execute. So as, as many as you can. And this, and this um, steps will be available when you do a printout of their um, production task. And you can as well as attach any um, documents or, uh, product, or product flow that you may have that you want to assign it to 
um, the activity that they can do. Okay. And last but least, once that's done, then at the end of the production process, at the end of the uh, um, element. Okay. Uh, we talked about the assignment of products within the bill of operations. And this is where we can assign the input products to each of those operations that we talked about within the activity. So in the product assignment, I've already done this, but um, when you when you go to create the build operation, you can assign them. Um, and so we've assigned our three input products within the activities. So when I click on the hover over the activities here, oh, I'm sorry. Here. So within this activity, we've assigned First activity, we haven't assigned any, but within the second activity, we've assigned all three of the input products, which is what we're going to be doing is assembling all, all of them. So we've assigned our P11011, P100213, and P110801. So we've assigned all under that activity, under the operation. So when we create the Production will have, or when we create the production order, we'll see all the um, assignment of those um, input products. So once you've created the production model, it's important that we have to release it for planning and execution. Um, if we don't release it, the system is not going to know um, whether to create it for planning or execution and have that available for production. So it's important when you release the production model, we have to release it for planning and execution. You can, um, the system does allow you to just make a planning so that the planning team is planned for the, um, for, the uh, for the product, but it will not let you produce it unless it's released to the execution. So we want to release um, this production uh, model to for planning, for planning and execution. Now, if we've made changes to our bill of materials and we forgot to update our production model, with those new changes, the system will not reflect those changes unless you go ahead and come back to the production model and release it for planning and execution again. So that's when the system will pick it up and use that new version that you've created. Okay. So now that we have a production model, we have the material, we have our bill of operations. And now I'm going to go ahead and walk you through um, a, a production process. And I'll generate a, a production order manually via a new planning proposal. So in order to do that, I'll go to Supply Control website and go to New Planning Proposal. And we're going to select our output product, which is our P11024. Okay. Uh, select a planning area. Uh, we'll put our input quality, we'll just create all of them. Okay. Um, availability, availability date. This is important um, because this is what will drive the system um, as your request date. So when the date you put in here is basically telling the system that this is the date that I want this order to be done on and be available for shipping or, or for the for sales order. Um, and you can date it to the uh, whatever date it may be. But for our testing purpose, we'll just leave this today. And again, and again, the date time is important as well. So we'll just see, leave that as it is. I'm going to go ahead and click on Enter, and that will automatically generate my source ID and it'll tell me the production proposals is part. So this right here, RPM version 10004, is our production model that will be saved. Uh, five is the version five of that. So if I update the bill of material, released the uh, production model again for planning execution, I would have another version, which would be six. So it's using the latest version I have total. I can go ahead and change that to the older version if I wanted to produce that version. So you do have that capability of doing that. 
So I go ahead and create a production proposal for that. I planned it, and I'm going to go ahead and save and close. Yes, over here. Okay. So the next step is to process the production proposal that we just created. So in order to process the production proposal, we go to supply planning, uh, supply control work center, sorry, and then we'll process the production proposal. Now again, this, depending on how your organizational works, um, organization works, this could be your supply planning team, or this could be that one individual that takes care of all of manufacturing. So it all matters on, on what part of the process your organization does. So what I'm going to look for here is our production uh, plan proposal that we just released. Um, it's going to be all in the bottom. These are all the old ones that we have out there that we're not even using. So there it is. There's our proposal 1375, it gives me the panic one. Again, see that start date is important. As you notice here, that the schedule I mean, it's like a half an hour before the availability date that we we planned or uh, were set for. Um, because this date, a half an hour difference, is based on the bill of operation um, duration that we defined in the bill of operation. So it, it takes half an hour to build this order or this product. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and release this. And as a supply planner, I'm going to go, okay, so I need this product. I'm going to release it to my production manager and ask them to produce it. So I've released it from the production proposal. Um, now the order goes into, depending on how, how you set up your um, or how you configure your system, it can go to the production request view and sit there until the production manager looks at it and reviews the request and puts it in the production order view. Or if you've configured, uh, configured it to automatically, once you release it from production proposal, it'll automatically to production order head of view and sit wait there for in process. So, and the way we've configured the system is to automatically bypass production request. And so I'm bypassing it sitting in our in prep status. So we haven't still released it yet. Um, it's available here for a production manager to review it. Um, so as a production manager, I'm going to go ahead and review this production order. So see what I need to do, what I need to make, um, see what I have in stock to be able to build that. So in the general tab, notice that it's just the detailed information about the order, a production request ID with which is 1375, the execution version, the, the production model version, um, how many planned quantities we have here. Um, again, before we planned it in planning for one quantity, but you may need to, you know, uh, plan additional quantities here, which you can also input here. Um, you do have the option to update the production order before you release it. So you can if you need additional quantities, you can go ahead and update that here. Um, date section here, as we talked about it, the earliest start date is the proposed date that the system provides based on the duration and the resource um, capability that we've entered into the global operation and the latest end date, which is we're set. So again, if you need to change it here as a production manager, I know that I can't have this available at this time, I can go ahead and change the date. And once I do that, the system will automatically recalculate the uh, data send date. So for our, for our purpose, we'll just keep it as as it is. And I can also look at the order structure again to see what, what my process needs to go through as a production manager. So I have my two operations um, that need to be executed. Tells me how long it's going to take. Is the duration here? Okay. Uh, you, you do have the option to look at the duration. Duration. You can, yeah, you know, reschedule. Same thing. The start date. And if you know your resources or your equipment are going to be used 
throughout this time period, you can start schedule a start date to another time when you know your equipment will be available to use. So you do have the option to do that. Um, I look at the products view here. Tells me all the input products that I need. And I can also update the input products. So if I know that I'm not going to be using more than one here, I can update the two parts. So it is adjustable. Um, while, I've, while I have you looking at the products, there's a uh, stack and demand the button up the top here. It's pretty important because this allow this tells me all the input products availability in inventory, um, and it gives you a signal, to, uh, green light, to know that okay, you do have this inventory. That might if, if you know you don't have it in inventory and it's not feasible. It also tells you what you have on stock, your free stock available. Um, so as you look at our input products for this order, it's, you notice that we do have all input products available to use. Um, the Sami has planned on hand stock, current on hand stock, any release documents, any open documents. So, and what free stock is basically what's available to use after the release on demand. So, the, so this is pretty important here for a production manager review before they go ahead and release it to production order. And then last that on this output product here. Um, this is just generally shows me what output product I need to produce. And again, you can change the pen quality as well. The resource tab is just letting me know which resources will be utilized during this process of the production order and the time that it will take. And execution monitor is basically just a view that tells you uh, where in the process of doing uh, the production order is once you release. Okay. Um, before I release it, I do want to show you, and you can release it from here. And you can also release it from the view that we were at our we clicked on edit. So let's just go back to that view here. Yeah. So I can release it from here. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and release it to the production order. So now this system will generate uh production tasks for the warehouse employee to use. So they can go to execution and production tasks if they're just assigned to that with their security right, or they can go to production control if it's just an individual that normally does all of this. We'll go to the task control. So the system generated two tasks basically based on the two operations that we have, right? Um, our first assembled general radiator and the, the second operation was um, packaged. So these are the two main tasks that we that we have out there. Um, <clears throat> as a production manager, I can assign these tasks to production workers who are going to be executing this. So by doing that, I can go ahead and assign responsible, and I can select an individual to work on these tasks. So in this case, we'll just assign it to myself. So that makes it available, and I'll do the same with the second task. So that one individual will be performing both of these tasks. So now we have a certain responsible person. So if they go to my task folder and they see that, okay, I have these tasks available for me to work on. So um, the I have over here, <clears throat> the key part of that is um, in the general tab here, they highlight, this gives you the uh, order ID, the um, so lot of ID that it created. Basically, your original ID and lot of ID are being identical. Um, 
tells you what input products that you're going to be going to need. Not in this case, but when you want to click on it, the one of the uh, key feature in our design is tells you when when someone's working on these tasks, it tells you if there's any tasks associated with with this task, which is why you have this feasibility um, green light and red light here. So the green light tells me that no, this is okay for me to work on. The red light tells me no, there's something that needs to be done prior to working on this task. And if I look at the sequence here. It tells me I've highlighted my first task here. It tells me I have no process and nothing prior to this task needs to be done. But there is a follow-up task that needs to be created, which is which is a successor, which is the one that we're looking at right here, the package rating. So the individual can tell if there's more than one um, task associated with one of them based on you know the sequence right here. So as a production worker, um, now that I've seen my two tasks that I need to perform, I'm going to highlight the first one and click on Confirm. Okay. So I'll go to my instructions tab here. So if you recall, in my in my first operation, we had we had two activities that find on there, right? The set up the radiator assembly and the assembly assembled assembly radiator. So in this case, we're as a my as a production worker, I'm gonna go ahead and start this activity, which is the setup. So I'm gonna go and highlight one and start the activity. So when I clicked on start activity, it created a timestamp to actually when it started. So this is good for when you're reporting wise as well. So I've gone ahead and I've started the activity. Now I've set it up. Go ahead, I'm going to finish this activity. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to my next activity, which is assembled radio, which is going to produce that. I'm going to go ahead and click on start. So again, that's the host timestamp. So and it also has a later start date. So, so if the uh, production order goes on launch, or something and it does not start, It'll, it does tell you the system does provide you with the latest start to and how long it should take. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and finish activity, assuming that I've gone ahead and finished and it took me less than five minutes to do. Okay, and it did create an actual end stamp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to update that, I'm going to click on save. So now my my task is finished. So it's finished, right? So I'm going to click on close. Now, if I refresh here, my first task will be will disappear and keep it in process. Again, and my second task became green because now that I've finished my other So before I do that, I'm going to go to my production task and process. See, so I notice that I just want to make sure that nothing's in process, so it's finished. So I'm going to go to something that's go back to my not started task, and I'm going to go ahead and click on confirm, and do the same thing in this activity. And in this case, you will need to confirm the actual output product. Which I'll show you when we get there. <clears throat> so we go back to the instructions tab. And I have one activity that needs to be performed, which is produce the package the radiator. Go ahead and start. And go ahead and finish it. So I finished this task. I still have some process because I have not confirmed the output product. So I can go ahead and go to confirmation tab. You see my total total confirmed quantity is zero. Um, and I still have open quantity is one. So here's where I confirm my output product yeah, how much I, how many quantities of output products I've created. So I confirm that I've created one output quantity. 
uh, no scrap. I do not have any scrap or deviation to it. And click on finish. So once I've confirmed, and you can uncheck this just if you, in case you confirmed it and and um, created two in case. You can define two here. So when you put in two quantities confirmed, your input parts will automatically update to those um, the needed to build that second output product. So I'm going to confirm here and click on save. So once I click on save, it still saves my changes, but it still says in process because I have not changed the status to finish. Once I finish this, it will give me a, a parameter to finish. It, it basically that tells the system who finished it and what time they finished this task. And once I click OK, now my finished product is available in your production output area. And it, this also updates inventory. It also creates your, your transaction in your general ledger. So as a production manager, I see that my, my production worker finished his task. I want to go ahead and review that production line. So I can go ahead and go to monitor. I'm going to go ahead and look at all production lots and I just released. Okay. So here's the one that I have, my production lot ID 381, that tells me, okay, it's finished, production lot's finished, the processing status finished because it's still not in process of any new tasks. All tasks are completed. And I can go ahead and click on edit and review it. And so in the general data, it just tells me the information based on request start date, request to start date, production start date, and then date when it started, when it finished. Um, how many plan quantities I've fulfilled? Plan one, from one, nothing open. Um, for the product tab. Shows you all the input products that, that were used. For the output products. <clears throat> Shows you that creates one. We created one output product. Now, at times there may be way uh, sometimes where the production worker still confirms one quantity that they completed, but somehow they ended up with two or three actually confirmed quantities of the output product. So the production manager does have the opportunity before they close the lot to adjust the confirmation. So they can go and adjust the confirmation and enter in two confirmed quantities instead of one. And that will still reflect your inventory. Um, but if that's not needed, they only confirm one, they could go ahead and create close the lot. So once you close the lot, we do not have the options to adjust the confirmation within the production lot. Um, then they would have to actually run through production order again or adjust the inventory. So what, let's just confirm and close this lot. So we confirmed. Um, nothing needs to be added. Yes, to confirm quantity is one. Go ahead and close the lot. So we're done with production for that production order. Let me go and close. <clears throat> so that's the production process and by design. I do want to show you the general entry is that it does create for the whole process. So I'm going to go to our general lecture work center um, with general entries. Okay. And you see uh, <clears throat> we have two uh, books here, so you'll see a lot of the same transaction in the two books. So we're looking mainly for our U.S. book. Um, so when we're going through production, it takes your working process and inventory and push it, puts it in finished goods once we've confirmed the quantity. Um, goes issue production, 
this is just taking from your raw, raw material inventory and putting in working process, basically taking it from your warehouse location and putting it into your production area. Um, the internal service confirmation is basically your um, your resources that are being utilized here. So it does factor into that um, based on what you've defined in your overhead cost for the resources. So that does take an effect here. So those are the giant two that were created. Yeah. So with that, um, this concludes the demo. Um, <clears throat> Olivia, did you have any questions that were written down by uh, anybody or asked by anybody? Actually, we don't have any right now, but we can wait a couple minutes to see if anyone has any. Sure, sure yeah, not a problem. And if, if anybody doesn't have one and somehow um, have an idea later on, a question later on, you can definitely um, email us or email me, um, and we'll definitely be able to help you out with, with any um, process or um, issues that you may have. Actually, I, I'm seeing one right here from Andrew Ball. Um, he says, hi, BJ, the production model and BOM shows me input quantity. Does it show me output quality also, or quantity also? Can it show output quantity? In the production model, is, is that what we're talking about within the production yes. model? Or is it, okay. Um, the production model will show you the output quantity. Um, uh, and let's go back and let me show you. Ideally, your output product right here is your output uh, product. The, the, the product you've assigned when you create a production model is your output product. So within the general information, the product ID here is your, uh, is your output product. Okay. Are you ready for the next question? Yeah. Okay. Deb Krikorian asked, is it possible to bundle two production orders into one somewhere in the process of generating a production order? Um, within by design, that capability is not available currently. Um, can't, um, you can't bundle two production orders for one. Um, Unfortunately, that is one of the ideas that's thrown out to the SAP, and they will be working on that. But at the moment, there isn't that capability available. But okay, um, depending on how depending on how the organization works, um, we can certainly um, look into some sort of customization that can be done. Um, we just we would just need more um, more requirements for that. Okay. Um, and Andrew has one more question. Um, he says, within task control, what do the move task and re-dispatch task buttons do? Okay, let's go back to our production control. Okay, so are you talking about move task right here and dispatch, right? So the move yes. task is basically you're moving um, your production orders from your logistics area to the production input area. And the redispatch task is just assigning a task. Um, if, I'm, if I have an assigned responsible person, uh, redispatch will just clear that um, assigned responsible to and dispatch it to somebody else that you define. Okay, um, it looks like that's about it. Uh, we can wait a minute or so and see if there are any more follow-up questions or anything. Sure.
Okay, I think we're going to conclude our session right now. Um, thank you for joining us today, everyone. If you have any other questions, I will be following up with all of the attendees. So feel free to ask me at that time. We truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us, and we hope to see you at our future events. Have a great day. Thanks, BJ.